Documentaries can bring new people into our world, like the one Big Frida bounces back, honey. For six seasons, that documentary introduced us to a booming music career of a New Orleans rapper and singer and activist by the name of Big Frida. Now, documentaries can show us lives that we don't normally live, like Big Frida's 2020 documentary about gun violence in New Orleans, Frida's Got a Gun, which showed how the city's gun violence issue actually led to her brother's murder. In fact, Frida is so involved in documentaries, either as a subject or as a filmmaker, we thought she would be perfect to present the Dorian for Best TV Documentary. Please welcome Big Frida! Thanks, Pharrell. Yes, I have been the subject of documentary series. I also commented on documentaries about music history and LGBTQ rights. As you noted, I have produced my own documentary about the senseless gun violence we face here in New Orleans. Needless to say, I think documentaries are very, very important. It's cool to see how many networks and platforms are doing more in-depth looks at our world. It makes me feel aware, connected, and alive. They all provide a balance to all the Hollywood fantastical made-up stuff. In the flood of new TV documentaries and docu-shows this past season, five stood out to the Dorian voters. New York Times presents Framing Britney Spears, FX. I'll Be Gone in the Dark, HBO. Pretend It's a City, Netflix. Antina, HBO. And the winner is... Framing Britney Spears. Accepting this award is Samantha Stark, the documentary's director and producer. Thank you. So thrilled. So I work for the New York Times and we have this series and we work collaboratively with a lot of people in the newsroom. So it was actually Liz Day's idea. She appears in the film. Uh, and the original idea was to look back at media coverage of Britney Spears, you know, post Me Too and see how outrageous and misogynistic it was. Um, and so I, w- I wanted to do that because it, that spoke to me. And then when we started researching for the film, we realized she was in this conservatorship. And then, you know, the it just went from there. I went to, uh, the first thing that I did was I wanted to know why people loved Britney Spears. So I think actually my perspective of coming at it fresh really helped because there were so many, you know, this, like, there's this narrative of her for years, like Britney went crazy and she needs protection and she's totally happy with this conservatorship. It's fine. Um, and I started talking to the fans and that changed so much. Um, do you want to hear about that? So I started, um, you know, speaking with a lot of the people who were leading the protests outside the courthouse, the, the Free Britney movement. And so many people just wrote them off as conspiracy theorists and made fun of them in a similar way that people made fun of Britney and wrote her off, actually. Um, but when I started talking to people and going outside the courthouse, Uh, I realized that they were people who were totally different than who I thought it was going to be. I thought maybe it would be people who looked like Britney Spears or, you know, teenagers or something. And uh, it was actually this whole group of queer people, people who were bullied as kids, people living with mental illness. And it was like so surprising to me because it was actually like, you know, Britney was bullied for her sexuality as a young person and told who she had to be all the time over and over again, um, bullied and humiliated for mental health issues. And so many queer people have the same experience, right? We were humiliated and shamed as teenagers for our sexuality. And, you know, a, a lot of us have mental health issues because of that or not because of that substance abuse issues. And, there, and it was like, really beautiful to see all these people coming out and saying, wait a minute, Brittany shouldn't be locked up in this situation. She shouldn't have all of her rights taken away. Um, And they really had this gut feeling because it was before all these court filings started coming out and before we knew Brittany really wanted out of this. Um, And they just had this, you know, feeling in their heart, like this is wrong. I have to do something about it. When we first started researching this, I realized like so many people who wrote about Brittany and made 
films and TV specials about many more men. Like everybody was a man, it seemed like almost everybody. And I also realized that the, you know, the main people who were often interviewed about her were men as well. Um, and so one of the first things that we wanted to do was just say, what would happen if we made this from a woman's perspective? What would happen if the decision makers were women, the crew were women, and the people we interviewed were women? And that simple choice, I think, like totally revolutionized the film because uh, it was, you know, it was hard to find women at first. We we had a spreadsheet of over a thousand names. So many people were scared to talk about Britney. Um, and so many of the like main executives at the music industry and stuff like that were uh, men. But once we started finding the women to talk to, the entire perspective, uh, our entire perspective and the entire perspective of the film on Britney Spears changed. It was really valuable to look at all this past media coverage of her ever since she was a teenager and came out and how um, paternalistic it was and misogynistic. It was totally okay to humiliate her. It was totally okay to treat her as dumb and somebody who didn't have real things to say. There was this trend that went on looking at, at all the footage where, you know, even uh, very prominent news people like Diane Sawyer and Matt Lauer, they would take these humiliating headlights, headlines of Britney. Britney Spears is a bad mom. Britney Spears is crazy. And they would put them on these giant screens and have her respond to them. I feel like that wouldn't happen to a man. And I also feel like since it was okay to, to treat her that way and, and belittle her and not listen to what she was saying, I feel like it made it okay for the conservatorship not to be questioned. This idea that her dad needed to take care of her. You know, there was a, a post posted to Britney's Instagram. I always say like in a statement posted to Britney's Instagram because uh, it's very unlikely that Britney totally controls her Instagram. She uh, has been kept in this bubble for 13 years where the she is legally by the court allowed to, her conservators are allowed to stop every communication she has with every person except for this one court appointed attorney who recently resigned. Um, so to me that it would be unlikely if she had a bullhorn to the world with her Instagram, but um, you know, it, it, even if she did write this, you know, the caption said, um, I don't like the way the documentary portrayed me. I don't want to bring up this humiliation again. Um, and I understand that. I, we had a lot of back and forth, a lot of back and forth about the ethical issues of showing all this stuff and re-traumatizing Britney. I was thinking about um, how we could re re-traumatize Britney as little as possible, actually, when we were making this and her family. You know, we wanted to reframe these pictures. Everyone uh, always, it's like burned in the subconscious of the world, right? So um, I did a survey of everybody I knew and said, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Britney Spears? And almost everybody said when she shaved her head. And so it really felt like we had to show that and give context to it because that's what we could do as the New York Times that no one had done. Like people just thought, ah, oh, Britney went crazy. She can't make her own decisions. But we're saying she was going through this custom City battle. Uh, her mom says she thinks she was suffering from postpartum depression. She was literally having men stalk her everywhere she went. She was trapped in her home and she had people humiliating her and, and framing her in this way um, that everybody believed. And so I think um, it was really important for the world to, to see those images to and to reframe them. We had hours and hours and hours and hours of footage of people humiliating Britney Spears. And so we tried to pick, you know, the few examples examples that were the most representative so that we could re reframe them. I, I guess if, if Brittany does feel that way, I understand because why do you want to look at humiliating things about yourself? Originally, it was supposed to be like 40 or 30 minutes. So it, it was a, a surprise that it turned into a feature. Thank you.